Rhyme, the beginning. One week, seven days. That was all it had taken for Jalorm Tanliel, hero of the stolen Directian Queen Jaminia, and steward Ziadril Phoenix here to sign the order to secure the resources for a large orphanage to be built on the palace grounds and staffed full-time with teachers, cooks, and caretakers. That had been one of their highest priorities after the crisis brought to the kingdom by Princess Simula, taking care of the children left behind after her vicious withering attack and the demon's rampage, and they quickly rallied support for it. An unused pair of guest mansions in the back of the palace grounds had immediately been renovated, with no small help from the Golden Dragons who had stayed after the siege, into a large facility to house, feed, and educate the 363 children completely orphaned in the chaos. In only two weeks, through the determination of the heroes and the immense strength of the dragons, the children of Directian were in the care of the palace. Seven-year-old Ryan Bowerstone had never met most of the heroes of Directian, and had only seen the half-elf Tanliel for a scant minute, but as she lay in the bed provided by the orphanage, after the hot meal prepared by the staff for the hundreds of hungry children, she whispered a little prayer to whatever gods were listening, thanking them. It had only been two weeks since her parents had withered in the arena. It had gone by at an oxymoronically slow but fast pace. The days seemed to drag, but so many had passed without her awareness. She was grateful that her and her parents' last words to each other had been loving, comfortable ones, parting with their usual love yous and stay safes. It provided Ryan little comfort, but it was more than some. Though she hadn't spoken in nearly two weeks, she had heard some of the other children commiserating that the last words they had spoken to their parents were full of anger and bile, and the others were tearing themselves up over it. Even though it made Rhyme a little uncomfortable, she had spent a good part of her day being clung to by a distraught five-year-old boy, crying about how he had said he hated his mommy. With so much sadness and despair-driven insomnia in the mansions, it was a wonder that Rhyme had any time to herself to think. But she had been fortunate in that her five roommates had already passed out for the night. She lay on her left side, staring at the cream-colored wallpaper. There was a hollowness in the pit of her stomach, one that she knew wasn't going away any time soon, but there was also a new warmth in her body. When the demons had crashed through the city, spreading destruction and murdering everything in their wake, one of the larger ones had taken a path right through her neighborhood, and one of its taloned feet had crashed down on the Bowerstone home. Brian was so sure she was going to die. The wood had crunched under the claws and had sent her crashing to the floor. But when she had put her hands above her to block the blow, a shield had formed around her. A faintly pale blue shield she didn't know how she summoned. But it was there, and it stayed there until she couldn't hear the screeching of demons or the yells of battle anymore. She had somehow been holding that shield for nearly four hours. By determination, by instinct, by sheer dumb luck, she didn't know. And when she finally let go, the wood of her house came tumbling down around her more tightly. Fortunately, the shield had allowed the splintered woods to form a dome around her, so she still was not touched, and hours later she heard her neighbors calling for her. Felix Combs and his two sons, Gino and Alder, dug her out carefully, and Judy Ann had taken the weeping and frightened girl with them to one of the nearby shelters. It was there that she had learned what had happened. Though Jaminia's heroes had tried to stop it, the cruel princess had killed the warden Arketh Wormwood, and had used everyone that had gone to the arena as a sacrifice to open the gates to the abyss and release the demons. Everyone, including her parents, had withered away into the ground and perished in screams of agony. And now Rhyme had some sort of magic in her too. Magic that she didn't study for, didn't ask for, and didn't know how to proceed with. Magic that made her more like... Simula. Rhyme nearly spit at the thought, but... Staring at the wall in another bout of insomnia, she got a better idea. I'll be better than Simula ever was. I'll be stronger and more powerful and stop anyone from doing what she did. I will protect people from anyone like her. With this new resolve, she threw off the blanket and slipped quietly out of her room. Patting her way down the corridors and the immense hallways, she kept her senses keen for any of the night watchmen. Rhyme was on a mission, and nothing was going to stop her. Thankfully, she successfully evaded any patrolling guards or crying children roaming around unable to sleep, and made it out into the back gardens near the palace walls without a hitch. 
It was almost pitch black outside. The moon was waning, and the stars were hesitant to peek through the clouds. Rhyme was having difficulty navigating the gardens and wishing for light, when she accidentally tripped and grabbed onto a branch of a rose bush to steady herself. The pain in her hand was quickly eclipsed by the wonder at what she now saw before her. The branch she had grabbed was now emitting a bright, comforting light, the leaves sparkling like candles. Swallowing a lump that had formed in her throat, Rhyme touched another of the roses on the bush and thought of light. It too lit up brightly, but it caused the branch from before to extinguish itself. One at a time, Rhyme thought to herself. I need to find something bigger to try it on so I can see. With only a little remorse, she plucked the rose from the bush and used it to light her way further to the back wall. In the time since she and the other children had come to the orphanage, she had discovered a small crevice in the wall leading to the outside. Rhyme carefully selected a brick just above the opening and willed it to start shining. The rose in her hand became a simple rose again, as the gray stone lit up unnaturally. With a ghost of a smile on her lips, she looked at the crevice more carefully. She was just barely too big to go through it, but maybe now with her magic. But where would she go? She didn't have anyone else. Her grandparents had died when she was much younger, and her parents never spoke of aunts, uncles, or cousins. Maybe she could go live in Gatless Town, start a new life there. She was only seven years old and a girl. She'd never be able to get an apprenticeship. A rustle in the nearby shrubberies caused her to jump, and a small light blue shield popped into existence before her for a brief second before it was lost. She realized that her panic was uncalled for, though, when a tiny black and orange calico kitten came stumbling out of the bushes. The panic returned, though, when a young boy tumbled out behind the kitten. The poor calico mewled pitifully as it staggered around blindly and, without even thinking, Rhyme scooped it up and held it close to her. She tried to summon the pale blue shield again to no avail as she saw the boy straighten up from his graceless somersault. Rhyme was able to see him fairly clearly in the light of the stone she had enchanted. He looked to be much older than her and taller than her, but his black hair and bright green eyes looked comforting. What didn't match here was his pale green tinted skin and his pointed ears. When he noticed her, he shyly rubbed the back of his head and cleared his throat. Um, sorry, he said nervously and Rhyme started second-guessing the need for the shield. I was trying to catch her. He pointed down to the kitten, now snuggling in Rhyme's arms, and she followed his finger. She noticed that horrid yellow crusts sealed the poor thing's swollen eyes shut as it purred, and instinctively she clutched the cat closer. I wanted to take her back to my friend so she could heal her, the boy explained. She's a really smart druid. She loves taking care of animals, but the Kitty didn't want to come with me. He then looked at Rhyme more closely, and she tensed at being scrutinized. I'm Rayan, he said, and extended his hand. Cautiously, she reached out the one that wasn't occupied with the feline and took it. He felt oddly warm, warmer than the air around them, and his presence was comforting. She found herself not wanting to let go of his hand, and she inched closer to him. What's your name? he asked gently his green eyes shining in the light from the brick. She opened her mouth, but nothing came out. For the first time in weeks, she wanted to speak. The kitten mewed from the crook of her arm, rubbing its scaly eyes on her raggedy shirt, and that encouraged her to try again. R Rhyme Bowerstone, she croaked, her voice crackling from lack of use. Rain smiled. Rhyme, like a poem? He asked, and she shrugged. It's not spelled the same she explained, and he chuckled. That's pretty cool. So, Rhyme, do you want to help me take care of the kitty? I have to go home soon, and I can't take her with me. He explained, rubbing the kitten's chin with his finger. Home? Rhyme asked. She could feel the ache of tears behind her eyes, but she refused to let them fall. She'd cried enough. I have to go back to Solania. I've been gone for a couple of weeks, and my uncle is waiting for me, he explained sadly. I don't want to leave my friends. Rhyme nodded. But what about the druid? C can't she take the kid? Rose is leaving tomorrow. She's going to NASA. Where's that? On the other side of the world. Rayan shrugged. But I've never been there. So, 
So could you take care of her? He asked pleadingly, his green-tinted face begging her to help. Rhyme nodded. What did she have to lose? Brayan beamed and leaped onto her in a hug. Rhyme did not reciprocate. She had been involved in her fair share of hugs over the last few days, Judy Ann holding her until her tears dried, small children and preteens clinging to her for comfort, but she never reciprocated. Hugs were for people she loved, and they were gone. Rayan didn't pay any mind, though, and continued. Here, I was trying to catch her to give her these pills. He released her and dropped a small pouch into Rhyme's hand. Maybe she'll take them if you give them to her. She doesn't seem to want to run from you. For some reason, Rhyme was driven to immediately sit down and try to administer the little balls of herbal medicine to the kitten. She hunched over the kitten with her legs crossed as a support and asked, Do you have any food, too? From his pocket, Rayan produced a small sliver of roast chicken breast, and Rhyme took it. Slowly, she wrapped a pill in the chicken and enticed the kitten to eat it without realizing that it was taking medicine. Rayan beamed down at Rhyme. You're really good with her, he said. Are you a druid, too? No. Rhyme replied hesitantly, keeping her eyes fixed on the cat to make sure she didn't cough or vomit up the medicine. I... I don't know what I am. Rayan tilted his head before looking at the still shining brick in the wall. Well, you're something, he chirped, and Rhyme looked up at him. That's one way to look at it, she said. Something special. Not everyone can do that. So you just had to keep going until you find out what you are, he said cheerfully. Rhyme couldn't think of anything to do other than nod, so she did as she watched to make sure the kitten ate everything. The poor thing must have been very hungry, so it ate the chicken and the pill without batting its tail at whatever taste it may have had. Rhyme could almost feel Rayan studying her until he patted her on the head. You'll be okay, he whispered, and Rhyme looked up at him, wondering how much he knew. His hand made her feel calm, like she could really believe him, but when he lifted it from her, the feeling was gone. I have to go, he said, looking sad and pained. Rhyme nodded, and he took a step back hesitantly. Um, you know, if you're ever in Solania, would you visit? She knew she'd likely never see Rayan again. She didn't even know where Solania was. But what harm would it do to be nice? I will. She affirmed with a nod and stared back down at the kitten. She heard his feet pad away on the grass before she heard him shout from a ways away. I'll try and visit you someday too, Rhyme! She didn't look back up as he sped back into the castle. But she thought, he wasn't so bad. Just you and me against the world, kitty, she whispered. You and me and magic, I guess. The kitten purred, and Rhyme could have sworn her fur sparkled for a moment. She was reminded of an old poem her mother had read to her about a witch and her cat, and she whispered again, Tantamile. Rhyme and Tantamile, okay? Tantamile mewed and fell asleep in Rhyme's arms. Rhyme looked back at the crevice below the glowing stone. She could escape. She could go anywhere she wanted. But why? She was magic. Where better to learn about magic than Directium? Play along, Rhyme. Your time will come. A soft, friendly voice whispered in her mind, and Rhyme nodded. She slept by the wall that night, holding the sleeping kitten and the pouch of pills to her chest. The caretakers who found her the next morning could not wake her through her blue dew-covered shield. <laughs>